any time you quote the word of God concerning any situation into that situation this is the word of God concerning a situation and the situation confronts you and you can remember God said the word and speak that word at that situation the Bible says the angels of God we now hacking on to the voice that you gave to that word on that situation. You have prayers in the night. They give you three days prayers in the night. And then your problem is your shop. A country people have finished you. Then you wake up. You go and drink water. Pour water for your head so that you be alert. Then before you know what. Holy Ghost fire pursue them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You begin to stand. This is how some people actually pray. They wake up as well as soon as they say, Oh, the witch is here. I take authority over you. You powers of darkness. I am awake now to face you. Wherever you are, listen to the voice of a child of God now. I challenge your body people here. I challenge your here. I challenge Israel. I challenge every shrine. I challenge, I challenge all of you this night. Listen to me. I have come to possess my position. And you think you are praying. You are not praying, no. You, you don't exercise authority in your closet. Authority is exercised openly, publicly. The prayer is made in the closet. Listen, church. What gives you authority is the prayer you have been praying. There is one prayer that you, you, you have no need to pray for because you are wasting your time God will not answer that prayer for you the prayer is oh Lord give me favor any minister that God is using don't bother to pray that prayer because the gift that God has given you is a gift already that attracts favor depending on how you use it Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto does the Lord. Matter, does it matter? Of they told you it doesn't matter. It matters. There is yet another day that is his mercy is still available. The trials of the Christian. Christians face trials. The God of this world cannot be our God because we are in this world but not of this world. We've been looking at the question that the disciples asked Jesus Christ when in Matthew chapter 17 they could not cast out that spirit from that young the, the young child Amen and they asked him, why couldn't we cast out this spirit? And they said, this type of case cannot go except by fasting and prayer. By fasting and prayer. Praise God. 
And maybe the disciples must have thought they have been praying. Why will the master tell them like that again? And one day, in Luke chapter 11, in verse 1, they saw Jesus Christ pray. And the disciples went to him and asked him, teach us how to pray. Since you say we know we pray, how can we pray to receive results? And I told you how that the Holy Ghost ministered to me that most of the prayers we pray, they are not prayers. And we've been looking at how to pray. And what we're looking at today, continuation, is to look at the most powerful prayers. There are four of them. And like Jesus Christ taught us, the first one is the prayer in secret. Prayer that you pray in secret. Nobody knows you are praying over that matter. He said, when you pray in secret, God who see it in secret rewards you openly. Hallelujah. The second one is a prayer from a contrite spirit. Psalm 57. Shall we open it? Psalm 57. This is the way the psalmist put it. Psalm 51, verse 17. It says, The sacrifices of God, what God accepts as a sacrifice, when you have committed anything, or you need anything from Him, they are a broken spirit, and then He added, A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. Psalm 145 Verse 18 And verse 19 The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him To all that call upon him in truth He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him he also will hear their cry and will save them. Psalm 34. Verse 18 and verse 19. Are we there? The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. What is a contrite a prayer? Uh, uh, uh. The prayer from a contrite heart. From a contrite spirit. A contrite spirit is a spirit that is broken down. Devastated. A heart that is broken to pieces. David's heart was broken to pieces. When he realized the abomination he had committed. Amen. When the songwriter said, Kneeling down in deep contrition. Kneeling down in deep contrition, that is in a, in a devastated heart. It's a contrite spirit. Contrite heart. Anytime you begin to feel that the mistake most people do is that is the time they will not pray. That is the time some people you feel that you are too devastated to pray. No, that is the time. Anything that comes out of your mouth in that condition, God answers. 
Amen. He will not despise you. That's why I've, I've, I've warned people who, 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 who treat fellow human beings anyhow. I say, if there is a way you will offend a human being, cheat a human being, humiliate a human being, disappoint a human being that puts so much trust and confidence in you, in the instant of that broken down spirit, if that person opens his mouth and calls you, nothing will stop it. Nothing will stop it. No deliverance, I am telling you. No deliverance will stop it. And many people, a lot of things you suffer from. It is a cause somebody laid, justifiably laid a cause on you. That's the truth. Watch the life of armed robbers. Watch the life of 419. Watch it. They never have peace in their lives. Never. No thief that broke into somebody's house in his absence and carry all his prayers. Because when the person comes in that broken down estate, we raise all gods and alters anything against you. It comes to pass. Nothing will stop it. You disappoint a girl. You use her, use her, use her. Then for the simple reason that you've seen another girl. For just a simple reason, no reason at all. You think she's just some furniture item that you can use and discard and pick another one. In the end state of that disappointment, if that girl kneels down and curse you, it will come to pass. That is why some people marry and they have problems throughout their marriage. Your former relationship. How you treated them. The way you treat your workers. Your husband, your house girl. You use some languages that they withdraw crying in a room and call upon the God of the poor. So be careful how you deal with human beings because of your position. But I'm not even looking at that. I am looking at you who are in that position. Know that that prayer is a very powerful prayer. That is why you cannot even pray. Sometimes you are so broken like I spoke during the vigil. You are so broken down until you can't even pray. Until you can't even pray. You can't even fast. You can't, you can't do anything. You just lie down there. And before you know what, that is the type of prayer that Hannah prayed. This is the church. That is why in verse 26 of Romans chapter 8, Apostle Paul was speaking. Can we read it? Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Now this is the way Apostle Paul put it. Likewise the Spirit also helped our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit is said, make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And, and you sometimes you just see yourself in that estate. Now you just, you know, find yourself just groaning. Just what you are even saying, you don't know what you are saying. You know, you are trying to say something, your mouth is moving, you don't even know. That estate, anything you say in that estate, God answers. It's a powerful prayer point. I mean, time of prayer. Praise the Lord. And another one, the third one, is praying God's word. Praying God's words. Remember that Psalm 103 verse 20. First, Hebrew 1 verse 14. It says, are there not ministry spirit? Hebrew 1 verse 14. Talking about angels. It says, angels are ministry spirits sent forth to minister to them that shall be heirs of salvation. How many heirs of salvation are here? Sure, we are heirs of the Father. That is who we are. We are joint heirs with the Son. Hallelujah. 
angels minister to us. He said, The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear God. Then Psalm 103 says something. It says, There are angels that excel in strength. Let's read it. They hacking, that's the way you put it. Hacking, they hacking, hacking unto the voice of his word. Let's read it. Psalm 103, verse 20. He said, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The day that scripture was speaking to me, years back, prayers became more meaningful again. See, they hearken unto the voice of God's word. Anytime you quote the word of God concerning any situation into that situation, this is the word of God concerning a situation, and the situation confronts you, and you can remember to say the word and speak that word at that situation. The Bible says the angels of God we now hacking onto the voice that you gave to that word on that situation. Don't know whether I'm saying it for somebody to understand. A very powerful prayer. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why Isaiah 41, verse 21, everybody knows that scripture. Say, Bring forth your strong reasons. You see, Anytime, why the Bible says, and, and, and that is where we have prayer of faith now. It's actually prayer of faith. Praying God's word is prayer of faith. How why do I say prayer of faith? The definition of faith is faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So there is something, hallelujah, you are hoping for. What gives it substance? Hallelujah. What gives it substance that gives you the reason to hope for it? What gives it substance? Amen. What gives you substance? The substance that gives you hope. The substance that gives you hope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know that if you sit on this seat, stand up, sir. Eh? You know that if you sit on this seat, it will not break. Yes, eh? Correct? Yes, sir. What makes you know that this seat will not break? Because I know that it's strong. What makes it strong? My faith I have. It's not by faith, too. You already know now the composition, the yes, make sir. of the seat. Yes. Eh? Yes, sir. You know now. There is another person that before you will sit on this seat, you will, he will have to double it. Am I correct? If he comes to sit down, he ain't going to do like this. Eh? Then you bring another seat to double it. Yes, sir. Eh? Now, 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 but you come confidently to sit on it. What gives you confidence is that you know the material that this seat is made up of. Yes, and you know it can carry your weight. Yes, sir. So what gives you hope that you will not fall down? Is because you know the strength of the material. Yes, sir. What gives you hope that what you are believing God for will come to pass is that you know the word of God concerning that thing. The word of God, therefore, is the substance that gives you hope. Amen. And there is something the Bible, Peter told us the word of God is a seed. You have to understand that the word of God is a seed and the Bible describes it as an incorruptible seed. That is when you plant a corn of wheat, seed of uh, corn, seed of corn, anything you plant, you know it can be destroyed. 
Something can go and remove it and scatter it. It may destroy. Maybe life not there inside. But that's so why it is corruptible. But the word of God is incorruptible. Once you sow it in any situation, it will bring forth and germinate. Why? Because God watches over his word to perform it through his angels that hearken unto the voice of his word. So, it is important that you know the word of God. It is important you know God's promise concerning every situation. Once, you see, people who walk by faith, that is what gives them confidence to say, I know this will happen. I know this will happen. Praise the Lord. Affliction shall not arise a second time. You lose your first child. That is your confession. That no other child shall die. That will be the reason. Lord, nobody can die again. Affliction shall not arise a second time. You lose your job. Now you've gotten a new one. Affliction shall not arise a second time. I'm using that as an example. Concerning sickness and every other matter. Concerning sickness, it is written by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I am healed. Doctors say I will die. But your word is said by yourself, I am healed. It's a powerful prayer. It's a powerful prayer. When one time I was almost dying of an infirmity. When I gave my life to Christ, I will not take drugs. I will not take anything. And now here am I almost dying. And I kept saying, it is written by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. Therefore, I cannot, I cannot die. This sickness cannot die. And I was almost dying and going. But when I had enough strength that I could say something, this was the last thing I said. And I was hoping that that would be the last thing I would be able to say before I die. I say, Lord, everybody knows that I am this estate because I am standing on your word. I'll be confessing to their hearing that by your stripes I am healed. And I have prayed before, you have answered me in other areas. Standing on your word. Let it be known, Lord, that if I die from this infirmity, then it will be known to the whole world that your word only comes to pass sometimes, not always. So I say, oh yeah, carry me go. As soon as I said that, I saw the demon walked out of me. I was challenging God too far. Praise the Lord. Praying God's word. You are planting a seed in that situation. Concerning your fruit of the womb. Lord, it is written among your children, male or female, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14. Quote it very well. If you don't quote away, maybe they miss something. Read them, read them. Not beside the right arm. Among your children, male or female, none shall be barren. I cannot be barren. Hey, you will listen to the word of God. Be fruitful and multiply. You will hear? It's a powerful prayer. Hypertension, diabetes, ulcer, cancer, HIV, AIDS, cough, chest problem is over in the name of Jesus. I declare this water hormonal drug in the name of Jesus. I declare this water the medicine of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number four. I 
told you there are four compassionate intercessions where you stand in the gap for someone not for yourself out of a compassionate ground not because somebody has come to give you money to go to the mountain for me if you if you collect money to go to the mountain to pray for somebody <laughs> praise the lord that is con a prayer contractor it's a very very powerless prayer that is the most powerless prayer on earth where you have to be induced to pray for someone no power in that prayer the virtue that goes with prayer comes from a burden in the heart you are asking God to do something for you because you have a burden in that area there is a pain in that area there is a pain in that area suddenly you are hearing they are robbing everybody in your compound the prayer you pray now is a prayer that comes out of desperation there is something that goes there is there is there is you know there is a feeling that goes with that kind of prayer that brings down god immediately in the message william Abraham preached that he tied to the 11th commandment and he tried to explain the power of love and he said that that was the secret to the success of his prayers he said what is you have to get into the feeling of the person you are praying for once you get into the feeling of that person in that instance of that feeling any prayer you pray in intercession for that person it comes to pass it may be for your child for your mother it may be for a neighbor maybe for a brother or sister in the ministry and you begin to have that feeling you can never have a feeling like that until you begin to meditate on what that person is going through then you place yourself in that position that is the only time you can call yourself an intercessor there is an anointing that goes with it in that estate it's not how long you pray the least prayer you utter in that condition god answers you see somebody a young man a young woman that says i have hiv and you see the person it is blowing to aids the first thing you're looking at is had and i died this one they died so this may be the last time i may be seeing this person a death sentence is upon this person Ah, you begin to feel if you are the one in that estate how will you feel now in that estate if you lay your hand and pray for that person or you collect that person's name in your closet and mention that case before God it doesn't waste time God answers it's a powerful prayer it is that is why intercession is a ministry you can never be a true intercessor until you have a heart of compassion you see people suffering before you know what you 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 are already feeling their feelings that makes you a true intercessor once you lift up your voice in that estate praise the lord the two Wednesdays ago when when that woman after the program two Wednesdays or so ago I was going I think I was somewhere here women were bowing down at the altar and suddenly I saw a woman that bowed down her head and was standing up with difficulty hold her her waist what came to my mind is after all this prayer we are closing this one is still going with pain and she was going somewhere here and said sister come back what's your problem and as soon as she started talking she broke down was crying she said it says it's a long story and she broke down tears were coming out you know for 
an elderly person like that that could not even stand to tell me so body not you could not tell me what her problem was you know it means something I, I, I didn't know I was so moved I said why are you crying why are you crying and she said this pregnancy I have is over one year so imagine the compassion that came I immediately held her and said let's go to my office in that estate I didn't have to pray for long before God came down for that woman scream at that demon to leave her and that day we got to know while the prayer was going on that her mother-in-law was responsible for it God the name of the woman God the name of her husband all during the prayers the demon was talking to me and confessing all what and as soon as we finished we got, she got home according to what I had while this demon was cast out here and the kind of prayers we prayed the mother-in-law has been hospitalized I'm sure till now what I'm saying so is from a compassion if that same woman had come to a minister who is hurrying to go home I said, brother, 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 Mecca. See, more than one year now. And then the mind is somewhere. More than one year. Uh, hey, in his now heart, he said, ah, now nah, this one, they come here, I won't go, I mean, I don't tire. Eh? More than one year. Eh, don't worry, believe God. Eh? Believe God. Believe God. Don't worry, believe God. Eh? Don't worry, I give you three days. You will deliver, eh? In Jesus' name. Uh -huh. You don't go. The result will be different. The result will be different. I have had ministers that I call and I say, please go and pray for this person. This is the case. And from the way they are going, from the reaction of the minister, I will just say, please come back. Or you hear me say, when you finish, eh? Bring her back to me. Because I know at the way you are going, now you are praying to fulfill all righteousness. There will be no result. And a minister should not pray without expecting result. Well, I'm telling you the power of intercession. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Compassionate intercessions. Hallelujah. Now the emphasis of this teaching, it comes from a correction the Holy Ghost wanted us to, to correct. How to pray. A lot of us, when you wake up, listen, there is a difference between prayer and authority. There is a difference between prayer and authority. Let me demonstrate it. When I come to you and you are sick and I lay my hand and I say, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. That is authority. I bind Satan out of your life. I lose you. I break the head of your enemy. It is authority. But now wait. If I come now and say, oh Lord, my brother is suffering from pains. Lord, come and heal him. That is prayer. And there is a time to pray. And there is time to exercise authority. That is where we make mistake. You have prayers in the night. They give you three days prayers in the night. And then, your problem is your shop. Occulty people have finished you. Then you wake up. You go and drink water. Pour water for your head so that you be alert. Then before you know what? Holy Ghost fire pursue them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You begin to stand. This is how some people actually pray. They wake up. 
Joshua said of this, all the witches here, I take authority over you. You powers of darkness, I am awake now to face you. Wherever you are, listen to the voice of a child of God now. <laughs> I challenge your body people here. I challenge your Christian here. I challenge it. I challenge every shrine. I challenge. I challenge all of you this night. Listen to me. I have come to possess my possession. And you think you are praying? You are not praying, no. You, you don't exercise authority in your closet. Authority is exercised openly, publicly. But prayer is made in the closet. Listen, church. What gives you authority is the prayer you have been praying. That's why Jesus Christ said, this type cannot go except by fasting and praying. What is actually saying, it is only one who is into prayer, that gives time to prayer, that prays regularly. Where do you pray regularly? Before the occasion, before the matter? No. Already in your closet, you have asked God to empower you for today. Before you left your house to go out today, Lord, let everyone that confronts me jump fire. Lord, I receive power from above to demolish the powers of darkness today. Lord, if the enemy rises in any way, Lord, give me the sword. I claim the sword today. Lord, empower me. Put, put fire in my mouth. When I speak, let heaven back it up. Lord, cause your angels today to go with me. Let today, as I am traveling and going, to my village, oh Lord. Lord, let all powers bow before me. When William Brown, before going for any program, he will withdraw for like three days, dry fasting in a cage, in a cave, I mean. People didn't know that. And he said that is a secret, one of the secrets to the anointing. And so when he comes, he doesn't shout too much before the demons will go. When that man came to disrupt that crusade that day, we all know the testimony. That giant man, that was a, a madman, any crusade will come, the man will come and scatter it. So strong. So security, they were watching out, and then the man appeared while William Abraham was at the podium. And the security men were going to rush. He told them, stop! That is a battle between Satan and Jesus. Why? Amen. He has already taken authority in his closet. Now when he stands, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why before every program, ministers must withdraw for prayers. Must is compulsory. We must withdraw for some prayers. Before every program. If, if you cannot withdraw by virtue of your duty or something, then you must create enough time during before that program starts in prayer. Praise the Lord. And that man came and was coming to finish with Abraham at the podium. What did the prophet say? He said, today, Satan, you will bow before me. And the man came, 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 when he got close to Will Abraham, everybody was watching in case. The man just went on his knees and bowed at the feet of William Brown. Was it there he received the power? No. It was in his closet. Praise the Lord. But the mistake a lot of us do is that you want to go and exercise authority when you have not received the power through prayers. It will not work. It will not work. I told you the other day I said that I prayed I remember the incidents very well. Very well in the night. Suddenly, I'm sorry, my morning prayers. 
I took enough time to pray that day. And I thought I prayed very well. And I entered my car. I was going somewhere. Suddenly my eyes went red. I looked at the mirror. And the driver was telling me. That was some years back. That. The bill I said you get Apollo. All this smoke will cover my eye. To open, open my eye was. I said, ah, from where? Just suddenly like that. All I remembered was. Ah, but I prayed now in the morning before coming out. I prayed against sickness. I asked the Lord that I should keep sickness away from me. How come now this one came from where? And I reminded that sickness of the prayer I prayed in the morning. And I remember, I reminded the sickness that it is written by the steps of Jesus I am healed. Now you have found the wrong address. Pack and go. I am telling you, these are some of the things that make me know there is a God that answers prayers. Chop, chop, chop. In few minutes, few, I'm not sure it was up to five minutes, my eyes cleared again. It went back. It was a wrong address. Amen. You should pray before you sleep. So that if anything happens, and then you are woken up in the night suddenly, now you will not be praying again. You will be exercising authority. Because before you slept, you were praying. You were praying. You prayed. Lord, protect me. Lord, let no powers of darkness come. Lord, let these witches in this compound not attack me. Lord, let this not happen. Lord, I receive authority from you. Lord, I receive power from you. I receive fire from you. You pray that type of prayer and you sleep. You are the one that if any demon enter the room, the Holy Ghost will wake you. Because you have engaged him. As soon as you stand up, now you will not be saying, Oh Lord, come and chase this demon away. Now you can say, You demon, where you came from? Authority. Authority. This now you can reign authority. When a witch that came to press me, now I used to do that as an unbeliever. Now I'm a believer. Six months after I believe, the thing won't come again. I woke up like this. I'm sure it was the Holy Ghost that woke me up. I saw the last two steps of somebody's leg running out of the room. And I jumped up. And I said, You were coming when I was an unbeliever. When you come, you see me, they lie down. You don't look where, where. Am I the same as I was at that time? Now to exercise authority. I was thinking, I was sure anything I say will come to pass. I, I remember I stood in the middle of the room. I said, should I cut the leg? Or I should blind in the eye? Or I should just rain fire? Or I should paralyze? I didn't know which one to use. In anger. Like David, who is this uncircumcised Felicia? The type of anger. Who is this witch that we enter my room? Now, now as I am like this, I just gave my life to Christ. That's the first year. But I knew who I was. I knew the difference between my former estate and now my estate in Christ. And suddenly, I am telling you, I didn't pray. I said, I didn't know which one I will use. Because I was sure anything I talk will happen. I said, okay, come back again. I go like that. From that day till today, the thing will come again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You have that type of authority because you have a relationship with God. So you must establish a relationship with God. And not the type of believers that remember God only when they have a need. If you are the type that remember to call upon God only when you have a need, you will have problem. Look, the time for you to protect yourself is when there is no trouble. Don't wait until trouble comes before you begin to pray. While there is no trouble, make sure you cultivate a habit of constant prayers. Every believer, you must have a personal prayer program. Prayer time. And don't tell me that you have so many children. 
John Wesley's mother had 11 of them. And they had hours for her prayers for every one of them. I will know the story of that family. Don't say because I just give my I just I just bump picking. You just bump picking, Abby. That is why you cannot pray, Abby. The slightest reason you will not pray. I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm talking about building a relationship between you and God. That is why the seven sons of Sceva they had no relationship with God. Paul, I know. That Jesus I know, but who are you? Amen. And the best time of communion with God, Amen, is during prayer. Once again, don't relate with God only when you have problem. You will be highly disappointed. Secondly, you exercise that authority because you live a life of holiness. You live a life of holiness. When Jesus Christ said, the priest of this world come, but he will find nothing in me. That is the accuser of the brethren. When he comes to accuse you, to find reason why your prayer cannot be answered, why the words that come out of your mouth cannot be honored, you will find nothing to accuse you about. I pay my tithes. I pay my vows. I spread the gospel. I use the gift God has given me, not for money. I don't charge people before I pray for them. Anyone that is in need, if I'm in position to help, I always help. Therefore, I cannot be in this situation. Life of holiness. Nothing to accuse you. And you have authority because you live a life of consecration. And when I say consecration, I'm talking about self-consecration. Consecration is a period where you take an inward look at your spiritual life. You can never go into true consecration unless you begin to meditate. There must be a spiritual graph that you have. There must be a graph where you can know the level of your spirituality. Am I improving? Am I stagnated? Or am I going down? There must be. I told you when I gave my life to Christ newly, I say Galatians chapter 5, the works of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit. I listed them one side like this, fruit of the spirit, works of the flesh. At the end of every day before I sleep, I will come and take them one by one. Love. Did I pass that one today? That's suffering. Patience. Did I pass this one today? This one. Anyone I fail works of the flesh. Anyone I fail, that is where I begin my prayer from. Lord, today I failed in this area. I failed in this area. Have mercy on me. Strengthen me in this area. And if you are sincere, tomorrow when you wake up, you will not fail again in the area you failed yesterday. That is what I mean by spiritual graph. Did anybody ask me anything? that I'm in position to help and I refuse I know that if I stop my ear me too I'm coming to call upon you now you too you will not answer me do I have unforgiveness is there anybody that has offended me that I have not forgiven and look at it and I have said this before let me repeat it our time is gone but please let me say this see unforgiveness I have tried to explain it before for those hearing me for the first time all forgiveness is different from long anger. Some people, when you offend them, they recover fast. Some, the anger is so much, they recover slowly, slowly, slowly. And sometimes, because he's still angry, you will say he has unforgiveness. Not be unforgiveness. It's anger. What is the difference between anger and unforgiveness? Unforgiveness goes with a retaliatory action. Unforgiveness goes with retaliation. I will do you back. But if you offend me and in anger, I say, please leave me alone. 
please leave me alone now and go leave me alone it's not unforgiveness anger is part of God's creation it is God's also a defense mechanism that God has put inside of us anger that also wave away some nyama nyama things away from you any nyama nyama that wants to come and then you show anger while like this the team will withdraw it's a defense mechanism by God himself in us so, so don't say he still have unforgiveness because I gripped him he no answer me that you greet me and not answer you does not mean I have not forgiven you because you must also allow a wound that has been created to heal so it is stupid carnality you just finish offending somebody then you go and say hey you don't do now you don't do I know a Christian you don't do now you don't. then he said leave me alone and then you are provoking I said leave me alone then he walks away they say, and they say they are Christian they, they, they know they forgive no Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You will only speak of unforgiveness if the person do something in retaliation. You do me, Abby. The person that will react back. Amen. Okay. There are different ways of reaction. He can go and carry a stick and pursue you. <laughs> he has not forgiven you, so he's looking for you to hit you back. Or some people will design it. You did it for me, Abby. He will set a trap for you to enter. Uh -huh. But they smile with you. They will smile with you. But the trap is there waiter. He's directing you there. When you enter, they say, Hey, God, don't answer my prayer. It's all forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So a life of consecration calls for you to let go. You are holding somebody in your heart. Let go. Just let go. Unforgiveness disturbs prayers. You see, woman, your body they charge. You don't go start prayers until you enter the woman be before you say, Oh, Father, forgive me. But you had enough time to fight that thing. A man that lives a life of consecration, they are the ones that exercise authority. I have a pack it up. Cannot live. You slept in your boyfriend's house yesterday. Last weekend. From there you go work. From your work you now come to your house. Then suddenly. You see one bat they fly for your room. Then you are standing up. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost. The bat would look you like this. Which Holy Ghost fire? For a sinner. Amen. If you are sincere with yourself, as you see that bat, you go open the door, run out, and say, Father, forgive me. The Bible says, Hallelujah, break the edge. Serpent will bite you. I know this bat will come. Now because I sleep with my boyfriend yesterday. I sleep with my girlfriend yesterday. There are some things that happen around you that should not happen. Before you cry to God, sit down and look yourself first. Why would they seize my container? The last container that came when you sold, did you pay your tithe? No, it's true. Amen. Nobody they favor me. Nobody they favor me. Nobody, nobody is favoring me. Anywhere I go, no favor. Pastor, please speak a word on me. There is no word that will speak on you for favor. Eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord.
close him. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In closing, who is a powerful Christian? A powerful Christian is a Christian that is prayerful and is full of the knowledge of the word of God. That is a powerful Christian. Not only prayers. Since that way they go mountain every time. I hope you know the word. If not, you will be an empty simba. Empty drum, making empty noise. You should be loaded with the word of God. Not only prayer, praying with the knowledge of the word of God. He said, resist the devil. And what will happen? He will flee. That's why we see the temptation of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you read that story in Matthew chapter 3, you will discover that, that he had just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right? And the Bible says that he was led of the Spirit to the wilderness. See the language. To be what? To be tempted. When I read that story, anytime I read it, I say, the Holy Ghost led a son of God to the wilderness. What purpose? To be tempted. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Amen. That is, he is the one to show us how every child of God will go. That's why I say, after you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are now a Christian. The next stage before you is wilderness. And the wilderness is to, for a purpose. The Bible said, so that you will face temptation. And that is the time you will make your calling and election. Sure. That is the time you will confirm whether the experience you receive now Holy Ghost or not just anointing. He was there fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. Watch it. Listen, church. He went there to be tempted. I wish somebody can listen to me. For 40 days and 40 nights, there was no temptation. 40 days and 40 nights, he was preparing himself for the temptation. There is no story of what he met during 40 days and 40 nights. It is after he equipped himself. Because you are not known until a fire is seen in you. Satan marks you immediately. He went there for 40 days and for 40 nights. What was he doing? Amen. All of us that are ministers, you should not go into your ministry until first you go and prepare in a closet to face the temptations that are waiting in your ministry. Don't go and start doing healing and deliverance when you have not waited on the Lord and equipped yourself. It was after the waiting period that Satan jammed him. Now watch it. He just came down from the mountain. He's full of fire. Now, Satan, now I told him, if, knowing that you are hungry, now you are hungry. If thou be the son of God, turn these stones to bread. See, Jesus Christ knew that that was the devil, that was Satan. If now you, suddenly you see a demon standing before you, what is the first thing you do when you come down from the mountain? Holy Ghost fire. Fire everywhere. <laughs> Somebody fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it's normal now. But what did he say? What did he say in that estate? Full of power. Full with the Holy Ghost. Without measure. The fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him. Bodily. The Bible says, he received not the spirit by measure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you see me, you see the father. And Satan stood before him. 
What did he use to resist him? The word, it is written. The second temptation come. What did he use? It is written. The third temptation came. What did he say? It is written. When Satan discovered that, he knew the word. The Bible says, Satan decided to leave him for a while. Not forever. Did he not meet him at Calvary? Did he not raise up those people to finish him? He couldn't finish him through those temptations. He sent those religious people to kill him on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who is a powerful Christian? Is a, a, a Christian that is powerful and knows the word. For every situation. It is that man. That can exercise authority. Full of prayer. And full of the knowledge of the word. And I'm not talking about cramming. No don't cram. If you cram you will forget. But put it in your heart. Let it be part of you. So much until once the situation comes, amen. I think somebody give me a call. I don't know who the person is. Forgot it. When he said that, I said that uh, it's not the Holy Ghost that when I'm standing and answering questions, that I said it is not the Holy Ghost, it is because I study. And the person is asking me that, why do you say like that on phone? He was asking me. It's not the Holy Ghost that enables you to answer those questions. I say, I think you misunderstand me. The Holy Ghost can only anoint what is already in you. The Holy Ghost quickens it. Your gift is already there. The gift cannot operate until the Holy Ghost quickens it. The Holy Ghost does not speak to me. I will hear a voice. That question that is asking is John chapter 6. Then I'll say, uh -huh, it's John chapter 6. No. As you are speaking, the Holy Ghost will remind me of the scripture I have read concerning that matter. That's why we must study. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor you must be powerful. Say, say you must be powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, draw near to God. Let's read it. James chapter 4, my last scripture. James chapter 4. This is the way James put it. Verse 8. Okay, let me just read it from verse 3. There's an admonishment that Apostle James was giving us here. From verse 3. He said, from whence come was I mean, from verse 3, sorry. You ask and receive not. Verse 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. Your desires. I desire this. I desire this. I desire this. Whether it is according to the will of God, you don't care. He said, you are adulterers and adulteresses. What he called adulterers is those of us, we are so worldly until all our mind, all our desires are all on worldly things. You are a spiritual adulterer. That is how God looks at you. He said, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? And then he said, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And who is the humble? I want to emphasize it. Who is the humble? Before God, humility is not a physical posture. It is a submission to the word of God. See, 
When the Bible says that without me, verse 5, John 15, you can do nothing. I repeat, for without me, Jesus says so, you can do nothing. They say in all thy ways, Proverbs chapter 3, acknowledge God. When you think you can do anything without God, whether God is there or not, you think you are something, it is a spirit of pride. Anytime you withdraw to pray, you are demonstrating humility. Lord, I am who I am today by your grace. I cannot face the day's activities without you. That is, you are being humble. Be humble. Verse what? Seven. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. And the only way you resist him is with thus said the Lord. Resist the devil with thus said the Lord. Listen, church. Resist the devil with thus said the Lord. Ah. Resist him. When a brother wants to rape you, because your prayer partner, na man, you choose. So you are so close, so close, so close. Then one day, he comes to attack you. A lost spirit comes upon him and is shaking and vibrating around you. To resist him, you will not say, Ah, Chukudi, ah, we be Christian, oh. Eh? You have said nothing to stop him, oh. Quote the Bible to him. Chukudi, it is written, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Whosoever defile God's temple, he will God destroy. That spirit will leave him. Wow. Anything that wants to defy you, quote a scripture to it. Any demon that comes, quote a scripture to it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Stop shouting, Jesus, Jesus. And you think that devil will flee. As they say, Jesus, he said, go say, Jesus. Even when you quote, he will see whether you know what you talk. He said, go counter quote. When you notice Jesus say it is written, he quoted Psalm 91 for him. For it is written, he will give his angel charge over you. They will hold you with their hands so that you will not dash your foot. From this pinnacle, jump down if you are a son of God. <laughs> Amen. But there is another scripture. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So it's good. You see why some of us are always studying and reading our Bible? Against the day of temptation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Didn't he flee? Didn't he flee from Jesus? He said, draw nigh to God. You can be going far away into your carnality. The more carnal you are, the farther you are from God. The more spiritual you are, the closer you are to God. And to be spiritual, one of it is to tame your body through constant fasting and prayers. Place your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Verse 10 Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and what will He do? What will He do? He will lift you up. Pray without ceasing. I don't finish. Can we stand up? <laughs> 